Welcome to e know how. In this video, we will look at how a flip flop is constructed. Before uh, going into the details about how it is constructed using gates, I would like to first draw the symbol view for the flip flop. So a flip flop will have a D input, and then there is a Q out, a Q output, a D input. And now instead of enable, which was there for the latch, it has a clock input. Clock input. So the way this is supposed to function is, so you have a clock running. And what the flip-flop does is, say you have data going this way. Say this is an example for a data. Now, if you look at the rising edges of all the clock here, so this is clock and this is D in, and the output will look like this. So, what it does is at every falling edge, it looks at what is the state of D in and then puts that on the output. So assume that D in was high, the Q out was high initially. And so at, the, at this rising edge, the first rising edge of the clock, it sees that D in is low, so it goes low. And then at the second rising edge of the clock, it doesn't care about what D in is again till the next rising edge of the clock. And at the second rising edge of the clock, it sees that D in is still low, so it remains low. And at the third rising edge of the clock, it sees that Dn is high now, so it goes high. So this is Q out. So a flip-flop is supposed to be looking at only the rising edges of clock. It's not like a latch where it is on an edge. When the enable is high, it passes D into the output. And when enable is low, it latches the data. Here it is not like that. It looks at, it's only at the rising edges of the clock, it looks at the data and puts it on the output. Or it could be the other way too. So there could be another flip-flop which has a clock bar as an input. So it could be, you can have a bubble here. So you can still say clock, but now it looks at the falling edges of the clock. So you have D in, and then you have the Q output. So now it could be looking at the falling edges of the clock. So what, what I meant by that is, now if you say your clock is this way, and I'm marking the falling edges, and let's assume that Dn is something like this. This is Dn, and this is clock, and then I will sketch the Q out now. So assume Q out has started at high initially. At the falling edge of the clock, the first falling edge of the clock, D in is low, so it goes low. The second falling edge of the clock, D in is high, so it goes high, the output. And at the third falling edge of the clock, the output goes low again. So this is Q out. So this is for this is for this case and then this the bottom one is for this case so you have the two flip-flops one is a rising edge triggered flip-flop the first one is rising edge triggered flip-flop rising edge triggered and the second one is falling edge triggered so these are all edge triggered. So now let's look at how the flip-flop can be constructed. Okay. So let's look at that one here. Let me go here. I got more place to work with. So flip-flop is, you will be amazed to see that it can be constructed using two latches. So let's draw the latch. 
we looked at how a latch is constructed. So, these are the inverters of the latch, the two switches. So, this is the latch. So, you have the D in here and the switch S1, switch S2, inverters A and B and this is the inverter one that brings in that brings in your input. So this is the latch. Now what I do is and usually latches the switches S1 was controlled by enable or basically when enable is high S1 was closed and S2 was closed when enable is low so you can say enable bar. So that is what it was. Now let's see later first now what I will do is to complete the flip-flop I will add another latch in series to this. So the output of the first latch is connected to say a second latch here So, I forgot to put a switch in between these two. So, that switch needs to be there. So, there is a switch. This is S1 prime. And then S2 prime. Then this connects, goes and connects back here. So, you got two, you got two uh, latches connected in series. Now the way we use, we control the switches is let's do S1 is closed when clock is low or clock bar or clock B and then S2 is closed when clock is high. So S1 is closed, S1 is closed when clock is low or clock bar is high and S2 is closed when clock is high. Now this one here S1 prime is clock will be closed when clock is high. It is similar to S2 and S2 prime will be closed when clock is low or clock bar is high. So now let's see how this works. So now what happens is so now let me write this here so S1 and S2 prime are closed when clock is low and S2 and S1 prime are closed when clock is high. So now looks like we need to actually draw these two um, you know cases and so see how how this works so let's redraw these cases with the switches in the two different conditions so the first condition when we will say when clock is high when clock is high so if you go back and look at it we said when clock is high this switch is closed and this switch is closed so D in and then you have the inverter. The switch is open and now the feedback in the first latch is closed. Then you got now let me use a different color here for this one. So now you have this. Now in this case now this switch is closed and the feedback is open here. So this is open. So now what's happening here is now in this case so D in so D in would have come in and it is latched in the first latch initially. So this latch it's latched in this 
and then whatever is latched is going to the output Q out now. So in this case, the Q out has the value that was already latched in the latch number one. So that's what is there when the clock is high. And now let me draw the case when the clock is low. When the clock is low, so now you have this closed and the feedback in the first latch is open and this one you have this open here and the feedback in the second one is closed so this is closed so this is when clock is low when clock is low. So now what, what it means is let me put a green circle around the latch that is closed. So this is Q out again. So what, what it is saying is when clock is low you are bringing the D in till this point here. You are bringing the D in to the input of the second latch. And then when clock goes high, you close, you close the second latch, you store the D in when the clock was low, so the D in here in this latch, and then pass that onto the output when the clock is high. So irrespective of so even irrespective of uh, when the clock is low or high, even if the D in is changing, it is the Q out is only getting the value at the rising edge of clock. Why the rising edge of clock? Because if you see at the rising edge of clock, now this is the clock and so let me draw a falling and a rising edge. So in the when the clock was low, when the clock is low, this is the condition 2 and clock is high, the condition 1. So this is condition 2 and condition 1. So when the clock is low, D in came up to this point here, but it doesn't go all the way to Q out. It's waiting for the clock to go high. And then once the clock goes high, it goes into condition one and puts that out at this rising edge. You, you see a change in Q out. But at the rising edge, what also happens is the first latch the, in the condition one, if you see the green circle here, it is this the first latch latches the data so it doesn't change anymore. So it always waits for the rising edge of the clock and then that's when the Q out changes. So this is how a latch is constructed uh, using CMOS, uh, CMOS devices. So it is constructed using two, two latches. And then I have to say again that all these uh, pass gates, all the switches are really CMOS transmission gates. All the switches are CMOS transmission gates and then there is a video that explains how the CMOS transmission gate works. So this is how a flip-flop works.